Hi everyone, my name is Alex and I work in the Wonton Islip offices. I will be with you guys for the month of November to do Therapy Tip Tuesday and I will be going over some techniques, tips, and activities that you guys can do at home. So I don't know about you, but I have a ton of candy left over from Halloween. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can target that either articulation wise or language goals that your kids come in for and I'm going to show you some tips on how we can utilize that candy to be more than just a sugary treat. So there are a few fun ways that we can use the candy to target articulation. It's really just about keeping the language simple, figuring out what your child is working on and using those words. So for example, if your kid is working on the TH sounds, you're going to find a basket um, or a hoop and you're going to just play some basketball and every time the kid's throwing candy you're going to say throw and that's how you target that. Same with the K sound. You have candy so every time they throw it they're going to be saying that word or basket. You, know, you get double if you do candy and basket so that's how you can work on those. Maybe even playing a game of catch so that's again the K sound. Um, another example would be maybe racing the two pieces of candy and them saying go candy go. Now you have a G sound and a K sound and you're targeting them together. So maybe you have a little one that is working on early language skills. A perfect way to incorporate the candy would be maybe having them label the colors that are on there. As we know there are many colors on a candy wrapper. So it'll give you plenty of opportunities. You can also work on verbs. So maybe have them feed their favorite doll and just say the word eat. You're working on it that way. Have them grab a handful of candy and count how many they were able to grab. So now you're working on their counting skills. You could also work on identifying shapes. Have them label all the shapes that they're seeing with all the different types of candies. And also, you can also work on following one step direction. So maybe you hide the piece of candy and now you're playing hide and seek and you tell them, you know, the candy is under a cup and they have to follow that. Or the other way around, maybe have, give them the direction, hide the piece of candy under a cup and now they have to follow it that way. So maybe you have a child who's working on more advanced language skills. So you can use it for sizing the candy, maybe have them organize it from smallest to largest or, you know, small, smaller, smallest and have them organize it that way. You can work on matching with them. So have them pick two candies or find two candies that are the same or two candies that are different. Uh, you pick the category, so whether the candy wrapper is the same or, you know, two of the same candies that have almonds in them, you know, anything like that. Uh, you can also work on attributes, so maybe finding um, all the squishy, soft candies go in one basket and all the hard candies go in another. You can also work on a scavenger hunt, which kids always love and hide the candy around. But by doing this, you're working on descriptive language. So you're giving them the descriptive word on where it would be. And then they're following that direction. Again, also working on directions. And finally, another goal that you can work on at home would be following directions. Following directions requires an individual to have vocabulary. Uh, adequate working memory skills and attention. So by working on this one goal, you're essentially working on three different aspects. Um, you can start with what's called sequential directives. So it's just multi-step directions, you know, first, then last or first, next, last. Um, so first find the blue candy, then find the square candy. First throw the candy, then try and catch the candy. So you can also work on before and after directions. These can be very tricky for some kids because it's a temporal direction. So it really involves that working memory. Your child has to do something before or after something else. So a perfect example would be um, before you put the candy in the cup, dump it out, or maybe put the green candy in after you put the purple one in. You also have spatial directions, so that involves above, under, over. Um, so, you know, you can have them put a small piece of candy on top of a big one, or maybe um, put the candy under the table. 
You can also work on just basic one-step direction. So if your, if your child is having difficulties with those multi-step ones, going back to the basics are always key. So you're gonna work on simple one-step directions. Um, you know, give me a piece of candy or find the circle candy. And those are just a few fun ways that you can use the leftover Halloween candy that you guys have to target articulation or language goals. And I hope these were fun. Uh, all this talk of candy really has me dying for my take five that's been sitting here. So I'm going to go eat that and I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye.